How fast of internet speed do you need to stream TV? Streaming data is like a river. It can be small or large or in between. The larger the stream, the more you get, but at a greater cost. Your goal should be to get just enough to do what you want to do and keep your costs down. So how much is enough? This is a good question since internet service providers, or ISPs, may try to convince you that you need the more expensive and higher speed connection to watch streaming TV such as Netflix or Hulu, but that simply isn't true. Your goal is to be able to watch a program smoothly and in good quality with a minimum amount of buffering, or none at all, and to do so as cheaply as possible. After all, the reason you cut the cord in the first place was to get away from overpriced TV programming. You don't want to pay more for a high-speed connection if you don't need it. So what speed do you need for an HD stream? According to the Netflix website, you need 5 megabytes per second download for each HD stream, which means if you want to watch two HD streams at the same time, you need 10 megabytes per second. Hulu recommends a uh, minimum of 3 megabytes per second for a 720 HD stream, 6 megabytes for a 1080 HD stream, and 13 megabytes for a 4K Ultra stream. So if you want to watch two programs on two different TVs in 1080 HD at the same time on Hulu, according to them, you would need to have 12 megabytes per second download speed. So they say that, but the, what they say isn't necessarily true, at least according to our tests. First we ran a speed test to see what our download rate in ping was. Ping was a decent 66 milliseconds. Anything 100 is considered good. As you can see, download speed came in at 5.25 megabytes per second, which is short of the 6 megabytes we're paying for on a Frontier DSL connection. According to the minimum requirements posted by Netflix and Hulu, we have sufficient bandwidth to watch one stream on one device from one provider. However, the reality is much different than that. We normally have two HD TVs running throughout the day until 11 p.m., plus two computers online all day, with one of them connected to YouTube quite a bit, plus one or two phones using Wi-Fi periodically throughout the day. Despite the high demand for bandwidth, or what we perceive to be high demand, we rarely run into a streaming problem. Occasionally, one of the computers gets sluggish, but a reboot usually fixes that and sometimes a TV will buffer in the middle of a program, but we always figure it's a connectivity issue with our ISP, which isn't always reliable. Keep in mind that even ISPs that promise a 99.9% .9 connectivity rate, that .001% equals 1.44 minutes per day where there is no connection. Six megabytes per second of speed is plenty to accommodate this household's demand for video streaming in HD. Since there are no gaming connections going on, we are unable to comment on those bandwidth demands. The only time we ran into a problem was when we tried to watch a 4K stream, which didn't work too well. There was uh, more buffering than we wanted to deal with, so we abandoned that experiment. Besides, HD fits the bill. Before you commit to a high speed and costlier connection, start out at a slower and cheaper rate to test the waters. You can always jack up the speed if you're not satisfied with the results. If you do have problems at the lower speed, and that lower is 6 to 10 megabytes, you can run some tests on your equipment to make sure there isn't a bottleneck there. There are four things to consider. The quality of your ISP, your download speed, your home network, and your computer. You can have a very fast connection, but it won't do you much good if your source for material isn't up to par with their upstream. It isn't something you can test either, but it's safe to assume that Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, all the major players, their upstream quality dialed in to work in a top-notch fashion. However, this is the internet and even the best systems can experience hiccups every so often. The rest of the system can be easily tested starting with a speed test like the one found at speedtest.net. Running a speed test will tell you how fast your download speed is and what the latency, ping, of the connection is. P 
ping is measured in milliseconds and ascertains if you are connected and what the response time is between your machine and the provider. Anything under 100 milliseconds is considered good. We are assuming that you are using Wi-Fi as your uh, connection to your modem. And if your download speed numbers don't meet your expectations, try connecting directly to the modem via cable and see if that makes a difference in speed. If it doesn't, then there may be a problem with your internet service provider. You can call them and they can usually run a test on the line from their location to check your status. If they find a problem and can't fix it from their location, they can send someone out to fix the problem. If you're connected to the modem via cable and your numbers, your download speed is faster than it was through Wi-Fi, then your Wi-Fi connection has a problem. Using a Wi-Fi connection on your phone makes it easier to run additional speed tests from different parts of the building to see if there's any significant change in download speed. If the speed is significantly lower than what you are paying for, it may be a good idea to get a new Wi-Fi unit. If the speed is where it's supposed to be in most areas of the building, but drops off in some areas, either avoid those areas or add a Wi-Fi range extender to your system. The final link in the chain is your computer which you may or may not use to watch TV, but if you do, then you want to check it out. Usually, in our case, if things are running slow, a reboot usually solves the problem. Please check in the description for updates, since it is easier to add new information in the description than in the video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to our channel.